I'm going to uh, begin with you, Himesh. Uh, you must have been so thrilled uh, that they took a punt on you in this instance, because I think, I mean, it's a bit of a cliche, I guess, but there is that, uh, that there is a struggle for, for people in making soap operas sometimes to make the move into kind of into mm. cinema and into film. And you do sometimes just need someone just to say, we're going to give you a chance. And you've been given that chance. You must be so thrilled, because this is giving you a sort of springboard now for a film in a career in, in movies. Yeah, absolutely. But I think it just, uh, it speaks to the shifts that have been happening in the industry in, in, in lots of different ways. Our perception of actors and where they may come from and, and what their background may be in various different ways. And yeah, for, for example, yeah, soap being a background is something that hasn't quite led to this sort of thing before. But it's been happening, you know. M my friend Ben Hardy was, was brilliant in Bohemian Rhapsody and Natalie Emmanuel, who was in Hollyoaks for a long time, she's, you know, doing really great stuff as well. So it's, it's been happening and, and I hope it continues. I'm going to begin, uh, Richard, by asking, I mean, the film needs the songs. I mean, obviously, Yesterday is, is a film that, that the Beatles songs in this instance are so imperative. I was just wondering about the kind of process when you were writing it, when you had the idea for this story. Uh, before getting sort of carried away, getting really into the, did you have to double check first that you were yeah. going to get permission? We did. <laughs> I think what happened is, my memory now is that I kind of wrote a 30-page treatment. Um, and we weren't going to use the original songs, so it wasn't as difficult a permission, but they still had to check that it was, you know, right-ish, yeah. that it wasn't a movie about a serial killer who loves the Beatles. Um, so, yeah, the thing is but that I told them the style and nature and some of the examples of how we're going to use the song, and they thought it sounded as though it might be all right. Yeah, and I don't mean to embarrass you, but Danny, why, why here mention this instance? Why, why was he your Jack? Because we, we, we'd been auditioning for a while, and I... It was the only time I got a bit of a fear about doing the film. And it was a, like, it's only an acorn. It was tiny, but I did feel it. It's like, wow. Because you watch these guys who were good players and good singers, but the songs felt karaoke. And I suddenly then began to think, shit, we're seeing two songs in this audition. How's that going to feel after you've seen 17? And then he walked in. And it was like, I mean, I knew the songs he was playing backwards, but they weren't like, they were sort of like, felt like his songs for a minute. And I was like, no, that can't. And that's exactly the reaction you want, is you want the, to feel like he owns them. And then you think, no, he doesn't. Because there's a, you know, it's a joke. They belong to Paul McCartney or John Lennon or whoever. And, and so it was, it would have been a crime not to cast him because he owned them in a way that nobody else had, really. That was why. I was wondering if you would do this. If you woke up in a world tomorrow where Shakespeare never existed, but you knew all of the stories, and <laughs> would you uh, would you do it? I've been thinking about this a lot, you know, because they, there's the thing of Harry Potter. Is the story it, or is it the texture of J.K.'s writing? So I think Shakespeare, I wouldn't give it a go, <laughs> because actually plots aren't his big no. thing. It's and also poetry. selling that language to people now. I mean, yeah, exactly. People mad. might say, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think you guys would have done it if you woke up tomorrow and there was, the Beatles hadn't existed. Would you, would you be tempted to... To, to pick up a guitar and pretend you wrote them? I think I would be, yeah, I would. just because it feels like the right thing to do. It's a, it's a, it's a kind of what a horrible thing to rob the world of, of their music. I mean, it's, yeah. Yeah, I'd be terrified that, I'd be, uh, that I wouldn't be able to sing them well enough. But if it worked, I'd be remorseless in the pursuit of fame and <laughs> fortune. <laughs> I'd just be doing a service to my community, actually. Of course you would like that to be. <laughs> and I'm sort of interested well, in collaborating with Danny, I mean, two, with Danny, sorry, I mean, you're two real sort of leading forces in the British film industry over the last, sort of, you know, 30 years, but, and two people that, it felt like were on sort of slightly different paths of the industry, and now you've sort of come together with this project. You must have been thrilled to have the chance to work with him, and, and why was he the perfect person to tell this story? One of the reasons he was the perfect person is he wrote to me the day I finished it and said, have you got anything finished? So I sent it to him without thinking about it much. But the movie needed a real sort of virtuoso director. There are 15 songs in it. You know, there was everything from Wembley Stadium to um, Galston on Sea. So I really wanted someone who was a maestro with excitement and energy. And both of us kind of are keen on ecstatic films, on trying to push the audience faster and more to feel more. But at heart, 
as you could see from his Olympic work and from all the romance and Slumdog and stuff like that, he's quite a softie, don't yeah. you? Know? He's an energetic Beatles-loving softie, and that's what I was looking for. What was um, uh, Ed Sheeran like to direct and star alongside in this instance? I mean, because I was reading that, I mean, obviously, you, we, everyone knows who he is, but uh, you caught him Googling your name at, the at dinner. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think. We went for this dinner where I was meant to be, so we were meant to get to know each other. I just don't think he knew who I was at all. He's a very busy guy, you know, it's like... And then, it, but then a, the, this film came up, The Beach, which I directed, and I saw him react. And then kind of, without sort of noticing, we'll go for his phone <laughs> under the table. <laughs> and that's when he actually looked me up on IMDb. Because he was showing it to a mate. Oh, is this the same guy? <laughs> like that. So it was kind of, anyway, it's fine. Um, I was very flattered, actually, to be... Um, even on the radar. Because I was wondering if you, uh, well, it sounds like you didn't write with him in mind, but have you written for directors in mind before? And how does that change the way you approach writing? No, do you know, I've yeah. never even written for actors. I mean, once or twice I've known who's going to play parts. But I think you've got to just write it in a world, dream a whole movie, and then start working yeah. out how it can get made. Because yeah. Ed Sheeran's obviously very funny in this, very self-deprecating. I, I read originally it was meant for Chris Martin. I was just wondering how much change when it, when it moved from Chris to, to Ed in this instance with the character. He has orange hair. <laughs> no, uh, quite a lot is the truth of the matter because, you know, I'd written specific jokes for Chris, who I worked with on a comic relief sketch about Game of Thrones where he was very funny. Uh, and then when we asked Ed to do it, I did kind of, in a way, rewrite every line. I remember leaving this and thinking, oh, that didn't feel like a typical Danny Boyle film. And then I sort of realised, I don't know what a typical Danny Boyle film is. I mean, you, is that a sort of conscious move on your part, to keep trying new things and to test yourself in different areas of, of storytelling? You're lucky if you can, because it's a wonderful thing to do to try and start afresh every time. Because there's, there's something wonderful about doing your first film when you know literally nothing. And you, your career might be over immediately, that's not the point. It's just you've got to find out whether you can, whether you've got an aptitude for it or not. To try and almost replicate that each time by working on material or tonal things that are different is wonderful, you know, because it's it, you don't you're never in that position where you think you know best. It's very dangerous that, you know. Although although people expect directors to apparently know what they're doing, you have to. So you give that illusion in one sense, but and really what you're doing is looking for ways to make the film with the people that you've chosen to make the film with and make a unique experience. Right? That's what you're after, really. Thanks so much for your time today, guys. Much Thank you. Oh, well, Thanks very much. much. Cheers. Thank, Thank you sure. very much. Are you doing The Little Mermaid is next? Is that the one you're No, you're no. There must be something on IMDb. I, I did, did have a go at it for a month oh, in 2015, but um, no, I'm not doing that. Ah, so how come that sort of came to an end? I don't know. No. I can't remember what happened. Faded uh, away. Faded away. <laughs> and obviously, I'm sure you've been asked this many times already today, but I'm interested to know anyway. But what's your favourite Beatles song? On, and does it change as often as it changes for me? No, I'm kind of locked. I mean, I, on, I, I'm keen on some of the early stuff. Sometimes I think This Boy is my favourite Beatles song. But really, And I Love Her and If I Fell, those two kind of matching masterpieces on Hard Day's Night are my favourites. I think If I Fell is my favourite as well. So is it? Yeah. OK, yeah. Have <laughs> but have you heard that... Yeah, you. Do you know on If I Fell, they miss yeah. that note in the original one? Oh, really? Vain! Oh, really? listen to the, if you go back and yeah. listen to the original, they don't hit the note, but they're in such a rush. Oh, I love that. There's a little bit of yeah. imperfection in it. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.